Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edmund Ironside and today we get to hear from the first bailiff in Act 3, Scene 2. We haven't met him yet and we didn't really need to until this point, but he, he does serve a purpose in this and the, this scene uh, makes me chuckle just a little bit, at least the, the kicking off of it. So things that are going on so far, uh, Canutus, the Danish guy, thinks that he should be the English king, whereas Edmund Ironside was actually named the English king and he happens to be English. And and there are different factions supporting each of those two men. Edmund Ironside's people seem to be kind and decent. Canutus's are conniving and sly and underhanded, especially Edricus. And Canutus is livid that Leofric and Tercillus deserted him and went over to Edmund's side. So he mutilated their sons and then was like, all right, we're going to go. We're going to like do this attack thing. Um, but he found out that 20,000 of his soldiers that he had sent to battle Edmund have been killed. So he did have a moment of like self-reflection and maybe a little self-doubt that Edricus kind of talked him out of. And so like now they're, they're rearing to go again. And then Act 3, Scene 1 is the one that we just finished up. And that has two archbishops going at it, which means it would have been illegal to perform that scene back in the day, but we had the Archbishop of Canterbury, who's on Canutus' side, and the Archbishop of York on Edmund Ironside's side, cursing at each other and calling each other names, and Canterbury actually threatens physical violence until York is just like, no, I'm not bending the knee and I'm tired of you, so I'm leaving. And, and Canterbury is like, I'm going to follow you off with curses and clubs, and that's the end of the, that's the end of that scene, which just sort of sits in this weird somewhere in England outside of all this other stuff that's going on. We just had to throw in this little fight between a couple of archbishops. So in Act 3, Scene 2, we are now outside the gates of London and we're with Canutus and his crew. So Edricus is there, Southampton is there, Uskatov is there, some other various lords and everything. And Canutus is like, okay, we're here, we're ready to go. Hey, uh, my herald, go tell them at the gates that they better let us in or face our wrath. So the herald gallops off to the gates and is like, you better let us in or face our wrath. And the first bailiff responds by saying, go tell your master, thus we answer him. His ships that proudly ride upon the Thames shall anchor on the ground where he abides, borne by the bloodshed of our carcasses. And we, compelled by thirst to suck the stream of this fair river dry, so that his men may dry shod march over the floating deeps, ere we will let him in these gates, or ope our lips to call him sovereign. Tell him we are resolved to keep him back. Tell him we are no traitors, but are sworn to be King Edmund's liegemen while we live. And if he stay, that shall he soon perceive. So the first bailiff is saying, nope, the only way that his boats are going to get anywhere is over our dead bodies. The only way that he's going to be able to cross the Thames is, is, is if all of us sit and drink up all the water that's in the Thames, because we are not opening the gates. We are more likely to drink all of the water in the Thames to pave the way for him than we are to open the gates or call Canutus sovereign. You know, we're not traitors, we're just sworn to Edmund. And if you want to stick around, you'll get to see a little bit about, you know, what that, what that looks like to be on the opposite side from Edmund. And the reason why this sort of cracks me up is at the beginning of the scene, it brought to mind images of like the last season of Game of Thrones when Daenerys is showing up at the gates to be like, you know, let me in or you'll face my wrath. And they have a couple of her hostages. And if you haven't seen the episode, sorry, spoiler alert, but it, it doesn't quite go to plan. But I'm picturing Canutus wanting his herald to carry the sort of majesty and and purpose and regalness and clout that Daenerys Targaryen does coming up to these gates. He wants to be this really intimidating force. But the first bailiff's response reminds me a little bit more of Monty Python and the Holy Grail with the, the knights up on the wall being, you know, your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries is sort of what's getting shouted back down at this 
guy who wants to be Daenerys Targaryen. But anyway, that's where that's where my brain went with this scene. But you could play it with more solemnity if you want to. So anyway, the first bailiff and the herald have a few more little back and forths where the herald is like, you know, if you're if you're smart, you'll let us in because he's he's pretty tough back there and you don't want to see what we've got waiting for you. And the herald's like, you know, bring it. We're we're fine. We we're not even worried about you. You're just a little blip in as far as things go so, and go back and, and tell Canutus that there's absolutely no way that we're going to let him in. So the Herald goes back to Canutus and he's like, they answered in the negative. They're not going to let us in. They were kind of rude. And Canutus is like, okay, well, I guess that means we have to fight. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. Let's go and beat down the gates of London. And then there's a stage direction that says, that says assails the walls. So they go and just start attacking. Canutus's forces are attacking the gates of London. And then a messenger comes in and tells Canutus that Edmund is coming to talk, coming to look for Canutus. And Canutus has this it's almost like he's excited about this. He's like, okay, this is going to be a good thing. He's either coming from a, for a parlay because, you know, we're kind of scaring him and he needs to, like, talk down to a truce here, or he's coming to let us in the gates. Like, because Canutus is feeling good about what he's doing now. He feels like he has the upper hand, you know, he is the attacker. He feels like his attack is going well, and it must be going well if Edmund's going to come out and talk to him now when Edmund didn't want to talk to him just a minute before. So then all of the lords start giving their little like, let's go get him, let's go get him type speeches, and we're going to get to hear Edricus's let's go get him type speech in tomorrow's monologue. So I will see you then for that. Mwah.